let's let's deal with the master teachers on this issue. Let's deal with the master teachers. Let's bring in the the grand master teacher George G M James. Let's bring in the 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 author of the stolen legacy. What does he say about the Moors? He says during the Persian, Greek, and Roman invasion, large numbers of Egyptians fled not only to the desert and mountain regions, but also to adjacent lands in Africa, Arabia, and Asia Minor, where they live, and secretly developed the teachings which belonged to their mystery system. In the 8th century AD, in the 8th century AD, as I said earlier in the videos, there was no more of consequence doing anything in Africa until the coming of Islam. In the 8th century AD, the Moors, natives of Mauritania in North Africa, invaded Spain and took with them the Egyptian culture which they had preserved. Knowledge in the ancient days was uh, centralized. It belonged to a common parent and system, i.e. the wisdom teachings of the mysteries of Egypt. It's the parent. You can't equate the Moors with Egypt. Egypt is the parent. It preceded the Moors. So you can't say that the Egyptians were Moors. They were not Moors. Because no one was using that word in reference to African Ethiopian people before the 8th century AD. You find me the writings. You find me the writings where they speak of it. Let's go to the Grand Master, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanan, who not only got a PhD in Moore's history from Barcelona, Spain, but also taught at Al Azhar University in Cairo, the citadel of Islamic learning on the planet, but a, a cornerstone Mo with nothing but a card in his back pocket gonna try to challenge master teachers that have been all over the world then done and done research on original text not no little ass pamphlet but the original text let's deal with uh the grand master teacher joseph ben yakin got to say he says the ghana empire was established between 50 bce 100 ce the exact time is debated daily but what I want to get up out of this, it says Ghana was destroyed by Africans called Almoravids around 176 of the Common Era. The Almoravids were Moors. Understand that. That when they got pushed up out of Spain, they came down into Africa and began to in attack the indigenous African cultures that were established there. It is the Moors that destroyed Ghana in 176 of the Common Era. Let's go down to number three. Song Hay. The invasion from Mauritania started... Wait a minute, let me go up some. The empire was destroyed and calculated 1592 of the Common Era by Africans called Moors from the north. The invasion from Mauritania started in 1582 of the Common Era at the end of Emperor Askia Ashaka II's reign. It lasted for 10 long bitter years of warfare. So there it is from the Grand Master Yosef Ben Yakanan. The Moors sacked Ghana and Songhei. This show you that they were nothing but the middle age Janja weed. They were attacking indigenous African civilizations. And these niggas don't sit up here talking about Morocco is your nationality. Why? Because you destroying all the other damn nations? There were other nations in Africa besides Morocco. So why you keep saying that Moroccan is our nationality? You got nations like Ghana. They're not Moors. The Ghanaians. You had the Empire of Sanghe, Mali, Benin. You got all of these uh, nations on the west coast of Africa. They're not Moors. Let's deal with the Grand Master Teacher, Dr. John Henry Clark. 
Colum Christopher Columbus in the African Holocaust. After the death of Askia the Great in 1528, the Songhai Empire began to lose its strength and its control over its vast territory. When the Songhai Empire collapsed after the capture of Timbuktu and Gayo by the Moroccans in 1591, the whole of the Western Sudan was devastated by the invading troops. Devastated by the invading troops. Who did it? The Moroccans. What year? 1591. Let's move on. European firearms across the Sahara to attack the once powerful empire of Songhai. The, the army did not reach Timbuktu until 1591. The, proper, the prosperous city of Timbuktu was plundered by the army of freebooters. A state of anarchy prevailed. The University of Sankare, which has stood for over 500 years, was destroyed and the facility exiled to Morocco. Who destroyed Timbuktu? Who destroyed the University of Sankare? The, the Moors. What year? 1591. Let's move on. In one of a uh, number of holy wars or jihads, Ghana was invaded by the um, Almoravids under the leadership of Abu Bakr of the Soso Empire in 1076 AD. The conquest brought an end to Ghana's age of prosperity and cultural development. The character of the country was slow to change. Who destroyed Ghana? The Moors. In what year? 1076 AD. Let's move on. Then when the Arabs and Moors were expelled from Spain, they returned to Africa after being the masters of the Mediterranean for 750 years. They had no sentimental attachment to Africa, they began to prey on nations south of the Sahara, principally the old empire of Sarkhe, from the Grand Master, Dr. John Henry Clark. So now we didn't heard from George G.M. James, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinai, Dr. John Henry Clark. Now let's move into Ivan Van Sertima, the golden age of the Moor. And in there, we gonna deal with Literature from John G. Jackson. The Moors were people who lived in Morocco. That's the reason why, the reason they called it that. The word Moor means black. It means black. And these niggas talk of, that black means death. But yet and still, the word Moor itself means black. It meant black people. In ancient times, all Af Africans were called Ethiopians or Kushites. In ancient times, all Africans were called Ethiopians or Kushites. And in the Middle Ages, the Africans were called Moors. In the Middle Ages, the Africans were called Moors. And the word Moor literally means black. So the Moors people were the black people. In medieval times, the name Moor was not restricted to the inhabitants of Morocco, but it was customary to refer to all Africans as Moors. Now, this is from John G. Jackson. He clearly lets you know that the word Moor means black, and it was used during the Middle Ages. It wasn't nothing but another word that the cracker used that meant nigger. That's all it was. It is a Middle Age word for nigger. It means black. Let's go on. This is from Renoko Rashidi. The Moors, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, are people who are commonly supposed to be black or very dark, and it is synonymous with the word Negro in many contexts. Rashidi and Brunson provides numerous examples of the synonymy of Moors with black during the European Renaissance and early. The word runs like a ripple across a vast pool of languages. The Oxford English Dictionary. Rashidi and Brunson. Renoko Rashidian says the word is synonymous 
with black during the European Renaissance, the Middle Ages, and the world runs like a ripple across a vast pool of languages. So now we done heard from George G.M. James, Dr. Ben, Dr. Clark, Ivan Van Sertima, and Renoko Rashidi. All of them grandmaster teachers. And a cornerstone mo with nothing but a damn card in his back pocket can't say shit but assalamu alaikum or whatever he can say will try to go up against these grandmaster teachers. How can you know more than these brothers know and they done been all the way to goddamn Europe then read the original text and your arrogant, ignorant ass will sit up here and debate grandmaster teachers. Go to more science, false teachings, part five.